Good morning and happy Easter. Easter is one of the most fascinating stories in the world. Symbolism abounds, for the Easter egg is a sign of new beginnings. Because since ancient times, the egg has stood for new life, resurrecting from the old, much like the butterfly working out of the chrysalis. For Unity students, there's also an extra layer the metaphysical level of the Easter story, which can serve as a blueprint for our higher consciousness and our resurrection to our highest state. In this state, there is no end to what we can manifest. Today, we will look into how Easter is your story as taught and lived by our master teacher and way shower. It is a true lesson in unity principles. It is the ultimate lesson in releasing, leaving behind what is no longer useful and renewing what is essential and resurrecting into a new being, a new you. To do this, I'd like to start with a couple of familiar and pertinent stories. A local prince, priest, and pastor were fishing on the side of the road. They thoughtfully made a sign saying, the end is near, turn yourself around now before it's too late, and showed it to each passing car. One driver who drove by didn't appreciate the sign and shouted at them, leave us alone, you religious nuts. All of a sudden, the clergy heard a big splash, looked at each other, and the priest said to the pastor, you think maybe we should have said, bridge out? <laughs> <laughs> and remember the story about the man who ignored the warnings about evacuating before Hurricane Katrina? He said to himself, I will trust God. If I'm in danger, then God will send a divine miracle to save me. When the flooding started and neighbors came by his house and said to him, there's room for you in our car. But the man declined, I have faith that God will save me. As the man stood on the porch watching the water rise up the steps, a man in a canoe paddled by and called to him, hurry. Jump in my canoe, the waters are rising quickly. But the man again said, no thanks, God will save me. The flood waters rose higher, pouring into his living room and the man had to retreat to the second floor. A police motorboat came by and saw him at the window. We will come up and rescue you, they shouted, but the man refused waving them off saying, use your time to save someone else. I have faith that God will save me. The flood waters rose higher and higher and the man had to climb up to his rooftop. A helicopter spotted him and dropped a rope ladder. A rescue officer came down the ladder and pleaded with the man, grab my hand and I will pull you up. The man still refused, no thank you. God will save me. Shortly after, the house broke up and the flood water swept him away. When in heaven, the man stood before St. Peter at the pearly gates and asked, I put all my faith in you all. Why didn't you come and save me? And St. Peter said, son, we sent you a car, a canoe, a motorboat, and a helicopter. What more were you looking for? Life is often like these two stories, answers, guidance, and help come our way and we ignore it because we have a fixed idea about the way life and other people should be. We just don't have faith in the divine process so we don't take heed and we crash. Maybe the universe answers our prayers by ending a job, a relationship, or a way of life for us so that we can begin our lives anew. 
but we ignore the help and we just get mad or sad or we give up because things aren't exactly in the form we prayed for and we end up losing out on our chance for a new beginning. You have heard it said often that God works in mysterious ways. Well, I can assure you that is true. If we just keep the faith and stay open to more than just our predetermined ideas, we will be able to experience miracles and the divine choreography that is constantly happening. And it's not just hocus pocus. Our faith attracts what we need all the time. Jesus' crucifixion was similar to that. Many might have seen it as the end, but it wasn't the end for Jesus Christ. He had a new beginning. He resurrected from what he had been and started a new life. And then he ascended and became one with God. This is our story on a daily basis. We have chances to end certain things and start over every day. But often we don't take advantage of the opportunities because they come as a car, a boat, or a helicopter. And we're determined it will be an angel that saves us. We just need to have faith in the divine order of things. Divine order or the divine process, what we call life, is full of answers and help. But if we just have faith, maybe you have a hunch or you start to see things differently or you notice signs such as those in the two stories you just heard. Opportunities for new beginnings and answers to our prayers abound, but we often ignore them instead of seeing every new experience as grist for the mill to learn from or as a chance for a new start. We search in vain for the exact picture of that which is in our conditioning and we think our prayers aren't answered if we don't match that picture exactly. Some of these chances for new beginnings might at first even look almost as bad as Jesus's being betrayed and crucified. But if you have faith, you'll see that all is in divine order. Jesus's resurrection and ascension to the state of heaven and oneness with God wouldn't have been able to take place without the crucifixion and ascension that took place. And often that is the situation with us. The loss of an old way of life so that the new can take place often seems disruptive to us. The beautiful butterfly leaving its chrysalis or the new life cracking out of the egg must feel like it's chaos too until they go with it and manifest their beautiful new life. Faith in divine order. Jesus certainly could have seen the Easter events as an end and crumbled. Think about it, people weren't living what he taught. Even his disciples went to sleep instead of watching out for him at the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus was a Jew, but the Jews turned against him. His own disciple Judas betrayed him for 30 pieces of silver, and the Romans listened to the ignorant crowds and freed the murderer Barabbas and crucified Jesus for what even Pontius Pilate had said was no good reason. Jesus certainly could have succumbed to the idea that his teachings and his life were over. But it was a new beginning, a resurrection, and after 40 days, an ascension to be one with the divine. That is what each trial can be to us. Two, a chance to resurrect into something new, to ascend in consciousness, to be one with the divine. That is to take on our Christ consciousness and thus become one with God and enjoy the kingdom of heaven 
right here on earth. That is the metaphysical meaning of the Easter story. The death of the human part of us, the resurrection of our higher self, and our ascension to oneness with God, and then the manifestation of heaven on earth. Easter is your story, or it can be, if we'll do our part. So how can we do this? Remember last Sunday when Stephen Fleming talked about how we all get programmed with faulty ideas and how our brains then start looking for all outward evidence to confirm our ideas? He told us that our job was to start questioning that program. We must be very present, awake, as the Bible says. We must start being conscious of the fact that we often aren't seeing the way reality really is. We only see what we've been taught. If help during the storm comes in the form of a car, boat, or helicopter, and we've been programmed to think God will send an angel with wings to fly us away, we might not avail ourselves of the opportunity when the boat comes. Bottom line, the first step to the crucifixion of our more human program self is to wake up to some of the ways that our ideas and beliefs just aren't accurate. Like how different we are from others when we have, as Stephen said last week, over 99% of the same DNA as every human on earth. Metaphysically, the crucifixion is our crucifixion, crucifixion of our former worldly program self. Then it is about our resurrection to something higher and better so that ultimately we can ascend to oneness with God or our higher self. Crucifixion, resurrection, ascension. This then enables us to access, to be one with God, so that we can live in the kingdom of heaven on earth, that place of peace, love, joy, and unity. We all have programmed parts of us that need denying, old prejudices, hatreds, feeling of disunity. We must rise above these ways of the world. The Bible asks us to be in the world but not of it. This involves constantly affirming our commitment to the higher principles and, not deny, and denying the lower, baser, more worldly values. And this doesn't mean denying a comfortable, abundant existence. It simply means daily renewing our spiritual principles. There is nothing wrong with beauty and comfort in our lives but we certainly wouldn't want to cheat, lie, embezzle, or manipulate for personal gain or value material objects over spiritual values and our spiritual evolution. In terms of the Easter story, we wouldn't allow our Judas parts to sell out for 30 pieces of silver, our Christ parts. To do this, we need to stay awake, as the Bible says. We need to be conscious of what we need to deny in our daily lives. Part of the Palm Sunday Easter story is that Jesus denied the money changers in the temple during his final days. Metaphysically, the money changers in the temple were a symbol of worldly contamination of our spiritual consciousness our temple, our life. We often need to deny thoughts that contaminate us like hatred, doubt, negativity, belief in lack and separateness. These are our money changers in our temple. We must also be awake to what we need to affirm. Love, compassion, forgiveness, faith, and unity. How did Jesus do this? How did he prepare himself for the crucifixion of his humanness? 
his resurrection into something higher, and ultimately his ascension into complete openness, oneness with God. First, Jesus went up the mountain to pray. Metaphysically, going up the mountain means going to a higher state of consciousness. We must go to a higher state of consciousness to prepare ourselves. Otherwise, we can't distinguish between the lower and the higher order of things. Then when Jesus came down from the mountain and was finally ready for his ride from Galilee to Jerusalem, he sent for an unridden colt to ride to make the journey. Metaphysically, going to Jerusalem means advancing from one sense consciousness to spiritual consciousness, a journey we must all take. And he made the journey on a wild animal. Metaphysically, this riding of the untamed colt represents Jesus' having power over and taming his animal senses. Metaphysically, when we go up to our higher consciousness, our mountain, we are able to access the wisdom and power that we need to master our senses and the physical world. So the Easter story is our story. When we go up our mountain, that is, affirm the higher values in life and deny the lower ones, we too go from sense to spiritual consciousness, and we too gain physical and emotional power and healings. That is, control of the physical plane, just like Jesus' power to control the unridden or wild colt. Then we get to Jesus' arrival in Jerusalem, his last and most important teachings, his death and his resurrection. Jesus' last teachings were for one purpose, to show people how to attain the kingdom of heaven on earth. The authors of the Bible and those who later chose which stories would be included in it might have easily eliminated Jesus' crucifixion. They could have thought that we'd believe his spiritual wisdom more if he had shown power over his fatal situation and escaped his fate, like in some ninja or Superman movie. Actually, Jesus could have escaped his fate was urged to do so by many. But there is a reason why he didn't and why the story is in the Bible as it is. The Easter story was critical to what G Jesus taught. It is a pictorial parable which showed that the crucifixion of the human personality leads to the resurrection of our spiritual self, our higher self, and our ascension to oneness with the divine our God, this state of heaven on earth. Jesus said such things as, the hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified and the Son of Man must be lifted up. We too must lift ourselves up in order to manifest the kingdom of heaven on earth. We must affirm our higher self and deny, or to use the biblical term, crucify our personality self, our ego self, our self-centered tendencies, and live by spiritual principles. This has nothing to do with being good girls and boys, so we'll go to heaven when we die. This is because if we live according to the eternal wisdom and principles, we will create heaven for ourselves right here, right now on earth. That's the way it works. Then there was the famous foot washing part of the Easter story. Remember, Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. This not only shows his humility, his lack of ego, but it also metaphysically shows the importance of our cleansing or purifying before embarking on any new chapter of life. We must purify our consciousness. Jesus represents love and wisdom. 
So love and wisdom are the purifying agents for our worldly consciousness. The story continues, and Judas, one of Jesus' trusted disciples, betrays him. Judas metaphysically represents the life forces within us in their unredeemed state. Unity theologian Dr. Herbert Hunt says, the Judas part of us betrays us into misusing what God has given, emphasizing the personal side and seeking satisfaction for self. Judas claims that the end justifies the means. We all have a Judas side that is tempted to sell out and get what our ego wants but we all have the capacity to change and not choose to follow our such programming. Then there was the Holy Communion with the 12 disciples, a ritual renewing purity and releasing negative thoughts and beliefs. And here we are back to the Unity 2022 Lenten, them of release and return. Release things like doubt, fear, and negativity, and renew faith, love, unity, and forgiveness. Jesus released his former life at the crucifixion and became a, and began a new life. He resurrected as a new being and then ascended to be one with God. His world may have looked like tribulation and suffering for a while, but he knew it wasn't. The Bible said his peace is not as the world giveth. It is indeed a peace which passes all understanding, a state of mind where miracles abound, where healing is natural, where one resurrects from the world's sense of suffering. It is a higher state of consciousness where everything is transformed and healed. This is seen metaphysically in pictorial firm in Jesus' final visit to the Garden of Gethsemane before his death. Gethsemane means olive press, indicating that prized olive oil was extracted there. Gethsemane indicates the struggle that takes place within the consciousness when truth is recognized as the one reality. The good is pressed out of life and affirmed and error is denied away. This is often the suffering that we undergo when we give up our cherished beliefs or prejudices. Our great work is to incorporate our Christ mind into soul and body, like the olive press, extracting the best. And while Jesus was in Gethsemane, his disciples were supposed to keep in lookout for the Roman soldiers, but they fell asleep. The metaphysical meaning of their falling asleep is, of course, that we must constantly stay awake and alert while guarding these newly adopted, higher Christ parts of ourselves, especially at first, until this way of living becomes automatic. If we don't, the Roman sentries are soldiers who metaphysically represent the outside influences in our lives, can march right in and take over. We are all tempted at times to betray our higher selves, to get something our worldly conditions said is worthwhile. Our spiritual guards fall asleep like Jesus' disciples did. Jesus said in Mark 14, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The Lord's Prayer asks that we not be led into temptation. We all have to stay awake to what has to be let go of. We all have temptations. Near the end, Jesus said, I am no more in the world as these are in the world. He realized that the world couldn't harm him because he had risen above it. Nor can the world harm anyone who is on the right, in the right state of consciousness. When in that state, we can look at any so-called bad situation or any one and think, 
Ah, so that's the way someone acts or talks when they are suffering. And we don't take anything personally. Jesus said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Anyone who does harm to another does it out of ignorance. We can even learn to have compassion for them and in their ignorance. Jesus was ultimately convicted by Pontius Pilate, who knew Jesus wasn't guilty. Pilate even tried to avoid the problem by giving Jesus to the Jews to judge. But when he was returned, Pilate ultimately gave in to public opinion and released the murderer Barabbas and sentenced Jesus instead. Pilate yielded to the clamor of the crowd and sent Jesus to the cross, just as we often yield to the clamor of the outside world. If we aren't awake, the Pilate part of us can yield to the crowd and worldly influences, and we act in unrighteous, worldly ways. Metaphysically, some say the cross symbolizes a process of crossing out certain error beliefs in our consciousness. Jesus said, if any man would come after me, let him take up his cross and follow me. This certainly wasn't telling us to allow ourselves to be literally crucified, but rather to cross out our human side like negativity, resentment, bitterness, hatred, and ill will. This is what we must all do, and this denying of the lower and affirming of the higher will allow us to resurrect into beings who will be able to manifest heaven on earth. Helping us create heaven on earth was what Christ taught and wanted us to have. It is what all great spiritual beings have taught. So the Easter story is your story. From going up the mountain to higher consciousness, to ridding yourselves of the money changer pollutants of your life, to taming of the unridden cult, your more animal self, to crucifying your more worldly self, and resurrecting your higher self, and then ascending to your oneness with God. It is your story. May you stay awake so you can affirm the good, deny the false, and resurrect into a new being. May you then manifest this kingdom of heaven, this joyful, peaceful, and abundant life for yourself. Starting today, you deserve it. Amen. Now we'll have the meditation. Close your physical eyes and relax. Completely relax. And go to your inner temple. Take a deep breath. This is your holy space, the place where you contact your inner divinity in peace and calm. It is the place where you feel purified, nourished, and strengthened physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. When you spend time in your inner cathedral, you are better able to handle the challenges that life can present calmly serenely and victoriously. The true spiritual experience is a direct perception of the divine for which purification of the heart is a prerequisite. All spiritual teachings agree on this. So let us take time now to experience the divine within us and all around us. Say, I welcome the divine spirit of love into my life. Say, I welcome the divine spirit of love into my life. Let go and let God. Be conscious of your total oneness with spirit. We know that our consciousness is the cause of everything that happens in our individual lives. As a man thinketh, so is he. What we carry in our minds and hearts is the reality that we create. 
So it is very important for us to periodically go to our inner cathedral and purify ourselves to start anew and recognize the divine in us so that we can create a heaven on earth for us to live in. Let us pray. Dear God, draw us closer to thee in these moments of meditation. May our hearts be open to thy holy truth and our minds ready to receive it. May your peace possess our souls and inspire us with love and lift us above, above all that is selfish and unworthy. May thy loving spirit be renewed in us so that we may follow thee in the service of mankind. Rest in the silence of prayer. There is a consciousness in us which struggles against seeming difficulties and problems, then converts them into blessing. It turns defeat into success, apparent failure into triumph, weakness into strength, and darkness into night. Those are the unity principles that we live by. So visualize yourself preparing for this purification in your inner temple this recognition of the only power in the universe that is in you and everywhere. There is no such thing that is meaningful and beautiful in the symbology of Easter as much to be gained from the understanding of it. The crucifixion of your lower self, the resurrection of your higher self, and your ascension to the total oneness with God, your source. Rest in the silence. When Jesus realized his earthly ministry was drawing to a close, he gathered his followers together in the upper room for a final meal and to impart to them some of his most profound wisdom. Metaphysically, the upper room represents divine mind, which is the source of all ideas. Jesus used symbols during the Last Supper. Metaphysically, the bread and wine represents divine substance, which is an invisible mind essence that permeates and envelops the universe and everything in it, out of which every visible form is produced. The bread and wine represent divine ideas of love, life, wisdom, power, and substance and bring them into manifestation or into visibility as love, health, peace, and wisdom. Whatever you may need so that you may successfully live your life and fulfill your divinely appointed purpose for being here, that you should have life and have it more abundantly. But before we can appropriate divine ideas, we must make sure we have room for them in our consciousness by cleansing our minds and hearts of all negative thoughts and emotions like resentment, jealousy, unforgiveness, bitterness, or criticism. You need to forgive and forget the shortcomings of others so that there is a place for the divine. As you sit in your inner cathedral, be conscious of your ability to become totally one with God. The forgiving love of Jesus Christ fills your mind and heart, and you are at peace with God and man. Now let the vast silence of spirit fill your mind and heart and feel yourself drifting into the deep peace of your Christ consciousness. Breathe deeply and slowly, for this is the moment of your mystical union with God. You are made new. You have been received into the divine plane by your desire to be one with spirit your fellow man and the world. 
you have rededicated yourself as the divine being that you are. You are healed of the lower consciousness and made one with your Christ self. So go forth in the world knowing that you have become one with spirit. Go forth and let this divine power express itself through you and be individualized in you. And may you know that you are protected, loved, and guided by that presence in you. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth in me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do. Amen. <laughs>